Our last topic that we need to talk about in this unit is the use of pesticides and toxicology. Um, pesticides um, help us to remove pets. A, pe a pest, not pets, pests. Pests are anything that compete with us for food. Um, anything that invades our lawn and gardens, eats wood in our houses like termites, anything that spreads disease, or something that is simply a nuisance can be considered a pest. Um, so pesticides or biocides are chemicals that we use to kill these organisms um, that are undesirable. Um, in this picture you can see this worker is getting ready to spray Roundup, um, which if you remember from Food Inc. was what we use on those crops that have been genetically modified by Monsanto to withstand Roundup. So Roundup kills all the weeds and every plant type there is. Um, except for the variety of corn or soybean that we're growing. Notice how he has a mask on. This is what is getting sprayed onto our foods. The first pesticides we used um, were things that were found naturally. Um, sulfur was one. Uh, toxic compounds of arsenic, lead, and mercury. Um, and what we noticed was as we were eating foods that we were using these um, pesticides on, human poisonings were starting to increase because we now know that these are metals that can build up in the body. Nicotine sulfate was used. It was extracted from tobacco leaves. And pyrethrum and rhodonone, which come from chrysanthemum flowers and darus plants. The second generation of pesticides were those that we created chemically. Um, Paul Mueller was the first to uh, discover that DDT, which was a chemical um, that was in existence, but he realized that it was a very good insecticide. Um, he won a Nobel Prize for this in 1948. Um, since then, we've been developing hundreds of synthetic organic chemicals that we use as pesticides. Um, we use about 2.3 million metric tons of pesticides worldwide each year. So some examples, Roundup of course, um, most of the chemicals that you can buy to put on your yard or use around in your house. If it's a broad spectrum, ag spectrum agent, that means it's toxic to many species. Like Roundup is going to kill any type of plant. If it's selective or narrow spectrum, um, it is it kills fewer organisms. So you can see the one there at the bottom targets ants as opposed to all insects. Pesticides vary in persistence, and what persistence is is how long that it remains deadly in the environment. Some chemicals will break down, um, whereas others will last for a very long time. In the U.S., our um, main use of pesticides is for cotton and corn. Corn use about 90 percent of the pesticides, or sorry, of the insecticides and 80 percent of the herbicides that were applied to crops. Insecticides, of course, are going to target insects. Herbicides are um, targeted towards plants or weeds. Um, about a quarter of the pesticides we use are for um, in, in homes for things like termites or spiders, ants, in gardens and lawns, parks, playing fields, golf courses, swimming pools um, to rid of unwanted pests. Um, and actually the average lawn in the U.S. has 10 times more pesticides per hectare than U.S. cropland. Um, homeowners generally aren't educated on um, how much to apply. Um, and we tend to care a lot about our lawn and, and how our homes look. And as a result of this pesticide use around the house, about there's 250,000 illnesses each year reported by residents. Now, pesticides are a necessary thing because they do save lives. Um, since we started using DDT, which we no longer use today, uh, back in 1945 uh, to kill things like mosquitoes and other vectors of diseases like malaria, the plague, typhus, um, that has helped us prevent deaths of like 7 million people. We also use pesticides to increase our food supplies because we cannot create arable land. Uh, we need to make sure that we get um, the highest yield per unit land as possible. This also can help lower our food cost. Um, about 55% of our 
food supplies lost to pests either before or after harvest. That's using pesticides. Um, if we did not use pesticides, our food prices would rise by about 50%. Um, pesticides tend to work better than other alternatives, uh, which we'll talk about what some of those are. Uh, they can increase the shelf life of food, make, make it, um, they're easily accessible. It's easy to ship pesticides, easy to purchase them, easy to apply them. And so a lot of times the benefits are going to overpower the health risks. Um, and then as we increase our technology, safer and even more effective pesticides are being developed. Now, of course, there are downfalls. Um, over time, insects can develop resistance to the pesticides through natural selection. And the broad spectrum insecticides that um, kill all insects kill good organisms as well. And so this can affect the food chain. It can kill natural predators, which may cause another parasite um, to explode. Um, some of these natural predators are wolf spiders, wasps, certain types of beetles. And if we unleash, I'm sorry, if we wipe out a natural predator that can unleash new pests. Um, and that in turn can have other unexpected negative effects on our crops. Ultimately what our goal is to kill the target pest. So a narrow spectrum pesticide would be best. We don't want to harm any of the other species. We also want it to have um, a short persistence. We don't want it to last very long. We want it to break down quickly after it's done its job. We don't want it to cause genetic resistance. And we want it cheaper than doing nothing, which right now it is cheaper to use pesticides if you calculate the loss to pests. As pests do become resistant to pesticides, um, a lot of times the companies that are selling the pesticides will re recommend you put more. Uh, when you put more, then uh, the pests are going to become resistant even faster. Um, and so this use of pesticides becomes less and less effective. Uh, that would be an example of positive feedback. Environmental effects, um, when we, if you look at that picture there um, at the top with the plane spreading the, um, the spray on the fields, only about 2% of that insecticide um, reaches the target pests. Um, a lot of it's lost it, through evaporation, wind blowing. Um, it's still going to coat the plants, but the insects aren't covering every single surface of the plants. A lot of the pesticides we use can harm wildlife. Uh, DDT, um, we're no longer allowed to use because it has a very long persistence and it uh, bioaccumulates in the tissues, which leads to biomagnification. Our honeybees um, have been wiped out uh, by pesticides, so we see um, over 20% of our colonies have been wiped out. And we depend on honeybees for pollination. So this is costing farmers over $200 million annually because these bees are dying from the pesticides we're using. Agriculture workers um, have health effects from the poisoning by pesticides, even leading to death. Um, a lot of times our agriculture workers are illegal workers, um, so the safety precautions aren't in place. In our developed countries, about 300,000 farm workers suffer from illnesses every year. And then we mentioned before that about 250,000 Americans get sick from using pesticides around the home. So let's take a closer look at DDT. Uh, it stands for dichlorodiphenyl trichloroethane. Um, it was the first synthesized chlorinated organic pesticide, which means it was the first one that was um, that we created. Um, at first it appeared to have a low toxicity, it was broad spectrum, so it killed many of the insects that it was targeted towards. It didn't break down, so it did not have to be replied often. It was water insoluble, so it didn't get washed away. We saw all of these as good things when we first started using DDT. We saw the crop production increase, the mosquitoes numbers, mosquito numbers decrease, so we stopped the spread of disease like malaria. It wasn't until 1972 that we banned it in the U.S. Um, and even years after it was banned, we still see high levels of DDT um, in the early 80s in some of our birds. Uh, the EPA found DDT in 99% of the freshwater fish it tested. Um, and there are other countries that still use it, and it does drift. 
Um, these are interesting ads that um, were placed to advertise DDT. Uh, we used to uh, sell powders that you could uh, put on your pets. Um, they sold wallpaper for nurseries so the insects wouldn't um, harm your child. Of course, now we know, um, you know, the dangers of DDT. Um, the Federal Insecticide, Fungicide, and Rodenticide Act, or FIFRA, um, which was passed in 1947 and amended in 1972, uh, what it did, it required the EPA to approve all commercial pesticides. The companies were required to test the products for toxicity. Um, they would test on animals, usually uh, mice or rats, and then extrapolate that to humans before they could register them for use. Now keep in mind it was the companies that tested their own pesticides. Um, they had to determine what the tolerance levels were. What um, level of pesticide residue is allowable when a consumer eats fruits or vegetables? The Food Quality Protection Act uh, was passed in 1996. Uh, the pesticide companies, once again, this is on the companies, had to verify safety of the ingredients on children. Um, when the EPA set the tolerance levels, they had to keep in mind that most fruits and vegetables had more than one pesticide, so they had to consider that combination when they set the tolerance levels. Other solutions to using pesticides, rotating crops, planting rows of trees, trap crops like Venus flytraps, adjusting planting times so that they don't match up with the pest, um, monoculture, which is planting one crop. Um, if a pest comes in, it can wipe out your entire crop. So if we use intercropping or polyculture or those other methods, that can help cut down on the damage by pests. Um, using genetically modified organisms that are resistant to certain pest insects or certain diseases can be developed. Using biological control, using natural predators to regulate those pest populations. Um, sterilizing the males or the male insects, which is um, usually done by irradiation. Um, Aqua heat, spraying the boiling water on the crops does not kill the crops but kills any of the insects. And irradiating the foods themselves. Um, it kills any of the insects, worms, bacteria, so they have a much longer shelf life. However, it does also kill the good bacteria in these foods as well. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is integrated pest management. Um, to make crop damage um, reduced so that it's at an economically tolerable level. Integrated, we want to combine both a chemical program and some of the methods we looked at on the last slide. So the first thing we would do is monitor the damage level of the pests, um, use those biological methods first, um, and then as a last resort use small amounts of the chemical pesticides. So it's using um, a certain sequence, proper timing of a combination of those methods to use um, you know, the least amount of chemical pesticide as possible. And we also want to uh, use less chemicals to help prevent or slow down that buildup of resistance by pests. Um, three ways that scientists urge the U.S. Department of Agriculture to, pro to promote integrated pest management is to add a sales tax on pesticides so it becomes more expensive to purchase. Um, supporting programs that they demonstrate or educate farmers on integrated pest management. Um, in order to do that they actually need to train personnel and county farm agents um, to train these farmers.